Near-death experiences have so much to teach us about what happens when we die, what happens when we cross over and reach the veil, and how we can live a more meaningful, connected, fulfilling life now based on those who have had these experiences and come back to tell us about them. Today's episode with Douglas Hodson digs deep into people who have had near-death experiences and the themes that come out of these experiences in terms of what it means to be to, to have soul consciousness, uh, what it means to connect with God in the end, how we can love unconditionally, and the three big takeaways that Douglas had after reviewing all of these stories on NDEs, as they're called. So enjoy this episode of Life, Death, and the Space Between podcast, where we explore the spiritual revelations that come from beyond the veil. Welcome, Douglas, to Life, Death, and the Space Between. Thank you very much, Amy, and thank you for inviting me onto your program. And I'm very much looking forward to sharing my research findings with you and your uh, audience. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this and how you started researching specifically near-death experiences. And then we'll get into what you found, because what you found has is fascinating and I believe has the power to transform how we all live. There are two books that were particularly instrumental in triggering my interest in the uh, near-death experience. Uh, the first book I read some 35 years ago when I was... Um, a professor at the University of Western Australia, a book by Dr. Raymond Moody titled Life After Life. That, of course, was a previous edition. Um, his pioneering work into the so-called NDE phenomenon. And I was uh, quite captivated and intrigued by what I read. Uh, but it was some time before I had the opportunity to read uh, the next book on the near-death experience. In fact, I only read it at the beginning of um, 2018, a book by Dr. Eben Alexander. I believe you've had him on your program. Mm -hmm. uh, Both his, of them. His book uh, titled Proof of Heaven, A Neurosurgeon's Journey into the Afterlife, in which he had a, a deep uh, NDE. And once again, I was totally taken um, by what I read, and, and I, I, I'm a curious person by nature, and I just had to find out more about the NDE. So I got onto the website of the International Association for Near-Death Studies, and I combed through the very impressive archives that they have, and they have literally hundreds upon hundreds of written accounts by um, those people who have had a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience and um, wanted to share their experience with the general public. So I combed through well over 500 of these NDE written accounts. But as I was going through them, um, I detected that there were a number of common themes and perceptions and insights. And I began to collate them in potential chapter headings. And the more uh, notes I took, the more these chapters solidified. And then I began to read uh, certain um, accounts that said that when they were at the veil, the light or the being of light telepathically told the soul or the consciousness, you must return to your body because now is not your time to cross over. You must return and complete your earthly mission. And part of that mission was to share what the soul or the consciousness was imparted with at the veil. Certain divine knowledge or revelations or information. And the light told the soul consciousness, 
share this with humanity for humanity's benefit. And that was my sort of light bulb moment. I thought, well, I'm going to try to be a mouthpiece for these 500 or so NDE authors who want to share their story. And hence my book, Spiritual Revelations from Beyond the Veil, which attempts to synthesize the core messaging that the end of ears brought back with them from the veil. So you yourself have never had an NDE. You're just fascinated. You were just captivated by these people's experiences and wanted to understand more in terms of what it potentially could teach us. Well, Amy, I've always been a religious uh, slash uh, spiritual person. And I find as I get older, I'm becoming less religious and more spiritual, if that makes any sense. How do you, yeah, how do you differentiate Um, those two? Spirituality goes beyond uh, religion. There's a direct connection between the soul or the consciousness and God or the light. Mm. And it transcends religion in in the sense that, if I can quote from my book, Uh, Many of the NDEers declared in their written accounts that prior to their experience, they were agnostics, they were still searching for the truth, or they were avowed atheists. They did not believe in God or an afterlife. But when they came back from the veil, they were convinced they had certainty and proof that there is a God or the source, there is an afterlife. Uh, in a nutshell, um, spirituality includes religion, but transcends it in a number of respects. Mm. How did uh, people come back from their NDEs and talk about spiritual realms? They carried back with them two main messages. Number one, uh, the fear of death, of physical death of our body, is human error. Because according to the end of years, the soul or the consciousness or the spirit or the life force is eternal energy. It cannot be destroyed. It is eternal. It is infinite. And when we leave our physical body, we leave behind our earthly identity. And we become part of the world of spirit. And if I can quote from one end to ear, um, the end to ear said, when I left my body, I left me behind. And when I was in the Mm. realm of spirit, I was everything and everything was me. There was just one. So in the earthly realm, we live in a, a realm of dualism. Uh, everybody and everything are separate. The perceiver and the perceived are separate, like Mm -hmm. we are in this interview. But in the world of spirit, dualism is extinguished and replaced by monism, oneness or interconnectedness. And there are parallels here, particularly with Eastern religion. Uh, For example, Hindu scripture, uh, where the highest form of consciousness in Hinduism is Turiya, which means a leaving behind of the self, the I or the ego, and absorption into oneness or the light. And that for Hinduism and Buddhism is enlightenment or self-realization. The Indi ears were consistent with this message, that when we enter the higher spiritual realms, we tap into a universal consciousness to ascending levels of omniscience. And concepts which would take us a very long time on earth to grasp and comprehend are instantaneously comprehensible in the realm of spirit. So why do we have to spend so much time here trying to figure out these concepts, like why not just all stay in spirit and know? 
Well, that's very, and why do we forget? That's a very good question. And I don't think I read the answer in any of the NDE accounts I read, but this is my educated guess. The NDEers all say that reincarnation is a universal law. Um, we have to keep coming back in various incarnations, be it in the earthly realm or other uh, physical or non-physical realms which are part of the cosmos, to perfect or to evolve our soul consciousness. We are imperfect. And as another end of year said, every soul has light and darkness, positive energy and negative energy. When we enter the realm of spirit and have the so-called life review, it is a purging or cleansing or purification of our soul. But that does not necessarily mean that we've learned all of our lessons. Uh, we are, all of us, are on the same pathway to God, but we each have different levels of consciousness. We have different levels of impurities. We have different levels of lessons that we must, must learn. And that's why we keep coming back. And when we re-enter the earthly realm, it's almost like the delete button is hit. Mm -hmm. We forget much of what we know when we are in the realm of spirit. And that, I believe, is for a higher purpose. Because if we knew everything in the earthly realm, what's the, what's the point? Uh, another anti-ear said, when you have challenges and problems in your life, uh, don't approach them negatively. Consider them as an opportunity an opportunity to discern the particular lessons you have been sent back to earth to learn and to master. And if we take that positive approach, you know, am I encountering this obstacle with this friend or family member because I have to learn to be a better listener, to be more empathetic, to be more patient, to be more forgiving? Etc., etc., etc. So that is my educated guess, at Amy, to what I consider to be a very good question. Help me understand how NDEers describe this information communicated, right? Because they're getting this information. Then they come back and they are speaking about it. They're, they're using language to talk about what. I'm assuming didn't come through through, you know, someone standing there saying, hello, I'm here to tell you these are the, le the lessons you're there to learn, right? So how does this all transpire? The uh, communication in the realm of spirit is quasi-telepathic. So no words are spoken. It is simply communication at the deepest level between soul consciousnesses. It's not only an, an exchange of thoughts, it, it's an exchange of knowledge, information, memories, feelings, and emotions at the deepest foundational level. And many of the end years described it as infused knowledge. It's almost mm. like your solar consciousness is absorbing this divine knowledge through a process similar to osmosis. It's just absorbed. Isn't that one of the main components of an ND, is the ineffability of it? Yes. This is the word they often used. It's mm -hmm. ineffable or indescribable. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one end to ear put it very well. It's a bit like trying to depict a magnificent sunset by drawing it in sand with a stick. It just cannot be done. Mm -hmm. The richness mm -hmm. of the meaning cannot be conveyed. Uh, some end of years say that the afterlife is beautiful beyond comprehension and beyond description. And end of years are frustrated in their attempts to convey what they truly observed and were told. 
And in some cases, they have to resort to attending support groups. And in some cases, there are relationship breakdowns. But they are clear. They are clear that what they experienced was part of a far greater reality that we know on planet Earth. So there's this part in the book, essentially we are here to learn and to love and be loved, to develop loving and caring relationships. We are here to expand within ourselves our capacity for unconditional love, a love that neither demands nor expects anything in return, and to manifest it towards all other beings. That's it. Well, Amy, it's a very simple message. Most messages from end to ear are simple and logical. They say the messaging from the divine realms uh, is simple and logical. But let's face it, the actual living out of the message is the difficult part. Mm -hmm. So how many people understand the concept of unconditional love? Mm -hmm. A love that attaches no strings to its flow, a love that uh, is for all that is, a love that Mm -hmm. does not differentiate under any circumstances, a love that is manifested in relation to which there's nothing in it for me. Mm. Now, Mm -hmm. that is the main message. That is what we are here for. Finally, 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 after so many years of you supporting the podcast, which I am so grateful for, for those of you who have supported the podcast on Patreon, thank you. It has truly been what has allowed me to keep going with this. And you've heard me say this over and over again. But I finally have an online community. So if you are currently a supporter of the podcast through Patreon, you should have received an email. If you are not yet a supporter of the podcast and want to join the Space Between community, now is your chance. Make sure you get on Patreon at Patreon at Dr. You can just put in Dr. Amy Robbins and it will come up. And if you will become a supporter, you will get added to my community. Also, if you don't want to be a supporter, you can join my newsletter, which is a great way to get more information about the things I'm working on, upcoming events. The community just gives you a way more insider track, access to me, access to conversations, questions, quarterly Q&As for my highest subscribers. So come on over and join us in the Space Between community. Mm -hmm. And we have to incorporate that in our daily living. But the NDE message goes beyond that. It's not simply about manifesting unconditional love to others. It's a realization that what we consider important on earth, many of us at least, power, uh, fame, the acquisition of material possessions and material wealth, Mm -hmm. these things in the higher realms are regarded as irrelevant, insignificant, and superficial. Well, if that's the case, what does matter in the higher realms? And what does matter when we're having our life review. And the being of light told many into ears that never underestimate your ability to touch others with loving kindness. And it's the small kindnesses which mean so much to God, which are tantamount to profound, the most profound manifestations of love. And it sees little actions that we sometimes forget, Mm -hmm. even letting someone merge in traffic in front of you and giving them a friendly wave. These are the things that we must be doing every day if we want to build up karma credit, if I can put it that way. Let's discuss and kind of dig into the nitty gritty of a life review, because I think it's so important as we're thinking about not cutting people off in traffic, and maybe even larger than that. How does a life review come to be? I mean, none of these people actually, I mean, they died, but they came back. So they're able to tell about it. But it sounds like it's something that happens quite 
near to their, their death in quotes. I'm saying death in quotes. Cause they, hmm. obviously these people did not, did not die forever. They just died for a period of time. Um, and, and what happens during it? Well, not, not every, everyone has a life review. And it's been postulated that only those who have some of the deeper NDEs do have a life review. But we would all have a life. We could hypothesize that we all will have a life review upon our f- final death from this current life. Yes, that is consistent okay. with what I've read. Uh, okay. the, the very important point to stress, Amy, is that it is not punitive or condemnatory. It is designed to enlighten the soul consciousness. It's a process of self-realization. So the soul is played an instantaneous review of their entire life focusing particularly on the most significant moments. And it's almost like 3D holographic movie, a 360-degree panoramic screen. And Mm -hmm. there is a being of light or a spirit guide or a guardian angel that sometimes will push the pause button and ask the, the consciousness to reflect on that particular scene. And what did you learn from it? How could you have done better? Etc., etc. So it's a facilitating process. It's inviting the soul consciousness to reflect on their life. What worked, what didn't. Um, what happened when you manifested loving kindness? And the soul is actually shown. The people who were recipients of your love, what they did in turn with the love you gave them. So they may turn around and manifest love to others because of the love you gave to them. So it's a domino effect or it's a ripple effect. And conversely, if you are cruel or insensitive to others, they in turn might take those negative feelings and hurt other people So you not only see the victims of your unkindness, but you see derivative victims. You see other victims of your victim's kindness, unkindness. So again, it's a ripple or domino Mm. effect. The main message is never underestimate the power or the impact of even our thoughts, let alone our words and our actions have on others. Because, as one end of ear said, it's like dropping a pebble into a still pond. Mm-hmm. And it creates exactly waves that, that ripple that. out into eternity. I've, I've heard or read about in the life review that you experience your life in many ways from the perspective of what it was like to be kind of in relationship with you. There are many different facets of the end to life review. You see it in three basic ways. You see it from the perspective of your own soul consciousness, from your own selfish perspective. Um, You see it from an objective third party's uh, point of view, someone who was there witnessing the events, but was not a part of them, a direct part of them. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, you simultaneously witness the events, and you step into the shoes of your victim. You become your victim. It's an exercise in empathy personified. How did the people that you, the stories that you heard, how did they come back and then, you can't undo what's done. How did they then live that forward in their lives? Or how did they take these experiences of their NDEs and and transform? Well, I suppose if uh, their victims were still living, they could attempt to reconcile with them. Um, if they were deceased, then perhaps pray for their forgiveness. They could reconcile them in yes, spirit. Yes, reconcile in spirit. And moving forward, try not to repeat that type of conduct. 
Um, as I said, it's a case of incorporating this into our daily behavior and almost mm-hmm. self-editing. Uh, I'm not saying for people to become less spontaneous. We must be spontaneous, enjoy our life. Uh, joy and gratitude are the high, two of the highest vibrational energies. But we also have to edit. <laughs> we have to edit our mm-hmm. thoughts because if we don't purify our thoughts, if we're thinking negative things about people, even if we don't say them, that's still drawing upon negative energy. So you have to cleanse the upstream waters if the downstream waters are to be purified. So coming back from the veil and coming through this NDE experience, that would be marvelous. You've actually seen your life up until now. You've seen where you went right. You've seen where you went wrong. And now you can fine-tune your behavior. And another, another point that I'd like to raise, Amy, if I may, and it draws upon something that Dr. Alexander referred to in his book. During the life review, um, there's no condemnation. You, you are not accused of doing anything wrong. It's not so much that you've done wrong. It's a case of not doing something that progresses the evolution or the elevation of your soul consciousness. The main message is to avoid negative energy, to avoid anger, mm. aggression, hatred, fear, greed, self-absorption. But what do we do? Right, and I understand that. But those are very human feelings. So is the goal to avoid those feelings or to feel them and let them move through you? Because as a therapist, I'm not here. I I don't want people to avoid their feelings of anger. I want them to understand the origins of those feelings. So then they can kind of let, let go of the grip on them. Of course. Recognize You're not sweeping these negative energies under the carpet. You're identifying them as influencers in your life and trying to understand why they are influencing you. So Douglas, would that would you say that is sort of your biggest takeaway from all the lessons and everything that you kind of extracted in this book from um, learning, talking, reviewing all these accounts? My biggest takeaways, Amy, would be two or three points. Uh, number one, fear. Fear is our greatest negative emotion. Uh, Some of us fear living, others fear death and the unknown, others fear Mm -hmm. change. But the end of years say, do not fear change, accept change. Every living thing grows and changes. You and I are, are not the same person that we were yesterday. We're continuously evolving. And if you open yourself up and accept change, the universe will bring brilliant, positive energy into your life. Well, what a beautiful way to end this episode today, Douglas. If there are people who want to learn about your work, read your new book, can you tell them where they can find you? Yeah, uh, Spiritual Revelations from Beyond the Veil. It's available from Amazon US, uh, Kindle, through my publisher's website, oldbooks.com, Hive, uh, Indie, most online booksellers, bricks and mortar bookshops. Well, thank you, Douglas, so much for your time today and for sharing your experiences diving into the world of NDEs. They're always, I've always been captivated by these stories. So I appreciate you kind of taking it all together, pulling together these themes and helping us who have not had the experience try to internalize some of those lessons and live those in our lives. So it's been my you. pleasure, Amy. Thank you so much for having me on. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Wondering what comes next and what it all means? Head over to Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Also, if you could take a minute to rate and review my podcast, I would really appreciate it. Stay tuned as we continue to explore life death and the space between.